Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. I've got a good one for you today. I am at Downtown Disney in Anaheim, California. This is the basically the shopping center, fun center that connects Disneyland and California Adventure, the other Disney park. Together, we're going to walk through this place and check it out. But uh, before I get into it, uh, so much to cover in the news, and uh, I'm in just insanity. It, it, you wake up every day and it's something new. Um, before I get into it, please take a second. Please hit the like button. Uh, please hit the subscribe button. Share this with everybody, please, okay? Um, first things first, you cannot make this stuff up. It is anticipated that one in five people in this country cannot afford their heating cost right now. Uh, it's, it's shameful that uh, politicians are letting this happen, but that's awful. 20% of the people say they cannot afford uh, their increased uh, fuel costs. Now, here's the thing. It's not even that cold yet. We just had a cold spell and, you know, hit the East Coast, and it really hasn't been that brutal of a winter. Now, there's been pockets, and I'm going to have people that, you know, they send me pictures all the time and things like that and tell me how things are, but really it hasn't been that bad. So, there is a story that says that our inflation problems were all caused by the stimulus checks. Now, think about this. There was over $4 trillion that was spent on stimulus. About $800 billion of that was given directly to uh, 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 citizenry in, uh, in the form of stimulus checks. And they're saying that's what caused the, uh, the uh, uh, inflation. It's not the current administration. It's not anything any politician did other than you spending the money that was given to you. Now, here's the thing. People cannot afford to live right now. They cannot afford to live, uh, you know, pay their rent. I spoke to Brian, a realtor from Central California today, a great guy, really sharp guy, who's been in the business a long time, and he says he's seen nothing like this. Now, in Central California, uh, places like Lodi, places like Stockton, this guy has seen stuff absolutely shoot up, okay? And uh, what's crazy is you had houses that were going for just over $200,000 less than two years ago, and now those $200,000 houses are over 400,000, okay? Now you can say, oh, that's great for the people that bought them. Yeah, that's great, but it's also insanity that things are as high as they are right now. So, you know, where does it end? And this guy is of the same belief of the Scott Walters clan where, you know, where you're gonna see something have to happen. You're gonna have to see a major fallout and a major correction in real estate or there's going to be a problem you know it, it's just you cannot have rents shoot up like this you cannot have housing prices go out of control and uh, you know he said something like you know I don't like to work with buyers right now Dan because I think that this is really inflated and this goes back to the banks that are not writing mortgages and uh, it's out of control guys now in an area where housing is relatively inexpensive now if you're buying a house there and that's the median income, you don't think it's inexpensive, and I get it. But when you compare it to something like Orange County where you have shacks going for 900 grand and things like that, it's, 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 it's all relative, but it's out of control everywhere. And you know, Canadian real estate's at the top of the market. Uh, I, I got a great article sent to me that uh, you know, Canada has to do something about its outrageous inflation. Now, people write me from all over the country and what they tell me is real stories, real bills that they're paying, real things that they're having to deal with. And the one thing right now is in Canada, it's the inflationary problems that they're having and the supply chain problems that they're having. Now, you know, our politicians can blame, you know, beef producers and things like that. Well, what's the problem in Canada? They don't, you know, it's different producers uh, that supply Canada. They're saying that Canadian uh, inflation is at 4.3%. But guys, that's nothing, okay? And I don't believe that. I don't believe it's at 4.3%. I don't believe that our inflation is at 7%. I believe that you should add a one in front of that. And then we talk, and then it's still probably not right. So, you know, do you think that the inflation was caused by stimulus checks? No, nobody, nobody living believes that. Now, here's the other thing. For those of you that did not get your stimulus checks, and there's, a, there's millions of people out there, think about this. There's about to be a form sent out to you from the IRS 
that tells you what stimulus checks you've got because you have to report it on your tax return if you're supposed to file a tax return. Now, here's what's fascinating. Imagine the people that are gonna be told that they got a stimulus check and never got it. You need to go to rebate, uh, file for a recovery rebate and get your money and talk to a tax preparer and have it done professionally. And again, because of all the wacky stuff, if you are a business owner, you should have an accountant. You should have somebody that you can talk to that you can get some solid advice from. Uh, I would highly recommend that. I would recommend anybody in business, but even if you're self-employed and it's just you, you should recommend having that. So let's look at this place and uh, kind of busy, kind of weird, kind of non-Disney-ish. Now what, what I mean by that is here it is, 20th of January, and they've still got Christmas stuff up here, guys. It's so non-Disney. I mean, normally this stuff is, is jumped on and moved on, and you'd see this place would be decorated with uh, uh, parts and, you know, uh, Valentine's Day and stuff like that in that spirit. But definitely a light, you know, daytime crowd. But uh, let's walk through this place. They took the House of Blues and turned it into a bowling alley. Splitsville. And then, you know, you got so much Disney gear here, but you got stuff here that's not Disney as well. So let's take a look at it and let's cover some more of the stories around here. Uh, they changed the parking around completely. I went and parked where I normally park. And it's, I realize I haven't been here in a couple of years. So there's that. But uh, if you ever come out here, there's a Mexican restaurant, Tortilla Joe's right there. It's pretty good. And uh, everything here is pricey. There's nothing here that's like, a deal this is resort shenanigan prices but the food's you know fairly good at a couple different places okay now here's a couple stories about tesla i found completely fascinating and the first thing is tesla bought solar city in uh 2016 they closed that deal now here's the thing the tesla shareholders are upset that they bought that they sued elon musk saying that it was outrageous that he paid the price he did and uh, they want him to refund what was paid for this in today's dollars. There was a trial in July and we covered it here, but here's the fascinating thing about this, is that um, Solar City was ran by Elon's cousins, okay? Lyndon and Peter Rive were the founders of Solar City. And uh, Elon Musk came in and, uh, you know, he was always the chairman of the board basically never worked there it really had nothing to do with the company I worked there okay at one point I can tell you that story later but uh, anyways uh, had nothing to do with it so he forced them to do a buyout because he was the largest shareholder and he made a killing on it the Tesla shareholders are unhappy they want him to refund it but they want them to refund it at today's dollars which do you think that's fair today's dollars are it would be worth 13 billion dollars based on how much uh, Tesla stock has shot up over the last uh, um, few years, okay? So there's that. Now the other thing is that if I said to you how much of a share in the marketplace does Tesla have in the EV market in the United States? No, I would think it'd be like 90, 95%, something like that. It's only 69%, which is a lot, okay? But they have a 69% share in the marketplace. Now, what's fascinating about this is that Bank of America has said, listen, time to dump this because this is going to take a huge hit and uh, Tesla's only going to be at a 24% uh, market share. And I'm thinking, okay, what is this gonna be, 10 years? No, they anticipate this in two years that Tesla's gonna lose market share and get down to a 24% share and that the stock price is going to be considerably less than it is right now. So there's that. Now, the next thing, is the eviction moratorium ended and you have all these different people getting evicted left and right. In San Pablo, California, there is an entire apartment complex. No one's paid their rent. Nobody, not during, for the last two years. So this place, the landlord gets sick of it. He sells the building, okay? The apartment building, okay? To get rid of everybody and to renovate. And what does he want to do? I want to renovate so I can raise rents and get current market value for this. So they're fighting all the tenants who have not paid their rent, got a lawyer somehow, and they're fighting this, and they're not paying rent, and they're fighting this. Now, again, talking to Brian this morning, you're seeing you know, how high rents are. Rents are outrageous right now. Rents have gone up 20, 30, 40% right now. You're seeing absolutely 
astronomical prices for people to pay rent during this time. And the eviction moratorium's over, and the evictions are running rampant. There's evictions all over the place that nobody can stop. And uh, basically, I think everywhere in the country now, there's no eviction moratorium. There's been some crazy suggestions, but it's pretty much done. So show your thoughts and all this stuff, guys. I really want to know what you think. Got the Ballast Point Brewery there. This Catal place, the Greek place, is pretty good. I've eaten there a few times. I can't see it from here where I'm standing. Anyways, pretty good. Again, a lot of shops. You got outdoor bars and stuff that everybody can sit around at. Now, one thing that I always do here is you come here, you get a drink, and then they validate your parking for four or five hours. So it's great. So share your thoughts on that. I've always gotten a kick out of people that throw change in the fountain. Look at all this money. Quite a bit, guys. You know, and again, did their wishes come true? What do you think? Think of the, I don't know, what's a few hundred bucks there in change? Anyways, always fascinated by this. The thing that's fascinating right now is the retail sector. I don't care what city you're in, there are businesses that are closed right now. And we've seen this happen and getting worse over the last two years, and it's going to get worse in the next 90 days. Now, one thing that happened uh, a few years back was there was a store called Mervyn's. And Mervyn's was a department store that was very similar to the company Kohl's. Okay, now, Kohl's right now is not doing well. And McKellum Group, which is a investment group that has a huge stake in Kohl's right now wants Kohl's to do something different. So they issued a public letter saying that they need to hire more retail uh, experts and get the pricing down and that they've got real estate they could sell and you know all these things that the company could do to turn itself around. Now again this reminds me of Mervyn's that went you know out of business like 12 years ago. And Mervyn's was a fascinating story because Mervyn's was having real difficulty and Mervyn's was a lower priced store chain that uh, did a lot of school clothes and did a lot of different things as far as the marketplace where they made money um, with schoolwear and you know uniforms and things like that, okay? They, their suppliers went to Mervyn's and said, hey listen, you need to get current, you need to pay us, or we're not going to ship, you know, be closed in time for the school year. Mervyn said, if you do that, we're going out of business. It's gonna, it's gonna end it. And basically it was a shakedown. They said, hey, listen, you need to do this. You need to pay us, you need to get current and you'll get all the clothes for the school year, okay? And they didn't. And sure enough, Mervyn's didn't get the delivery of the school clothes. They went from supplier to supplier to supplier and got together and didn't ship the school clothes. Mervyn's filed bankruptcy and then ended up going chapter seven and they were completely defunct, okay? So the CEO of that company said, I, was, I told you this would happen if you guys shook me down and did this. Now, I think that, that Kohl's is gonna be in the same position because Kohl's, if you've been into one of these places lately, it is horrific. There's nothing in the men's department and they can blame the supply chain and everything on the boats and all that stuff. And the McKellar Group can shake them down and say, you need to sell real estate, you need to get a better management team, you need to get people that know what's going on in retail. That may be, all that stuff may be 100% true, but I'm telling you, if these guys don't work with Kohl's, Kohl's, Every location that I know of that Mervyn's was at, Kohl's took those over and bought them or took over the leases or whatever after the last bankruptcy, you're going to see Kohl's as a vacant building. Now, I told this story a couple times today and that was I needed to buy uh, a new ledger for uh, uh, 2022 and uh, I go to the Office Depot in my neighborhood and I'm on the phone and doing 10 different things in the car I shouldn't be doing while I'm driving and I pull up in front of the Office Depot, get out, walk through the door, the place is closed. 
And like an imbecile, I didn't even look up to see that the place had closed and it went out of business on January 1st. So you're going to see more and more retail places like this. The Steinmart next door to it, which was god awful, it was a horrible store. There was nothing ever in there that you could buy. That place is out of business. And now uh, Office Depot is closing up multiple locations here in Southern California. So share your thoughts on this. Do you think that Kohl's is gonna make it? Do you think that Macy's is gonna make it? Remember, we had the greatest uh, Christmas sales and then you find out we didn't have the greatest Christmas sales. So retail sales are off. You guys can't have it both ways, but I really think that these stores, every time I go in there, they don't have inventory and Kohl's is the worst right now. So share your thoughts and all this stuff. I really wanna know what you think and if you think this place is gonna survive. Now at the end of Downtown Disney is the entrance to Disneyland. And this is an absolute shell of what it used to be. There's nobody out here. Now this is California Adventure and there's no one standing there either. This is absolutely crazy how there's no one there. Now you've already gone through security so they eliminated the security check but there is absolutely no one here. There's so much to do when you walk through this place. There really is. Now, it was just announced first time unemployment job claims are an absolute disaster right now. You've got 286,000 people that filed for first time unemployment job claims. And uh, it was up. You know, they, I, I always love this. They do an estimate and they thought the estimate was going to be 225,000. And they were way off and to their shock, which is crazy. But you've got 286,000 people that filed for first time unemployment job claims. Again, the number's absolutely massive. You know, this place also has got all these different shopping areas that you can get to, all the different carts. But I have been coming to this place for, you know, since it opened, okay, because I live in the area and um, I have never seen it this light ever. So if you want to, Go to downtown Disney, now's the time. And one thing that we're seeing also in the economy is inflation is not going to slow down anytime soon. The thing that's absolutely crazy is that Procter & Gamble, the soap company just announced, think about this, that all soap prices are gonna go up an additional 8%. They just had a 7% increase. So it's basically 15% this year. So they say that your soap is gonna go up an additional dollar, you know, right now, absolutely crazy. Got all these different stores you can go through, you know, and again, you know, some of them national stores, some of them just, you know, like, you know, novelty, you know, uh, uh, travel places. This Naples restaurant, this place is fantastic. Really good Italian food. Uh, I, I like it because they've got the thin crust pizza. Uh, one thing that's nice about this place was that uh, they also opened up a smaller location where you could just get a small pizza next door. Uh, Napolini, which is really cool. Um, you know, another thing, Xi Jinping, uh, the head of China, okay, is the ruler, whatever you're gonna call him, um, that guy, he did a, uh, a, he did a speech and he also asked uh, that Jerome Powell not raise interest rates and that it would be devastating on the world's economy. Well, thanks dad. I mean, what an idiot. Um, so again, they don't want the, um, economy to change. They don't want us to raise interest rates because it would dramatically affect China. And I'm sure they're not concerned about us. They just want to keep sending those shipping containers over. Uh, one thing that's really popular with Disneyland also is you've got the, um, you know, the different bakeries and things like that, candy stores. You know, one thing that they're doing is they're making different cakes and things like that over here. One other thing is that the IRS is no longer going to let you just go online and look at your tax returns. You have to be registered through a thing called ID.me, which 27 states have, and you have to have pictures, you have to have ID. So it's gonna eliminate uh, identity theft, but it'll be interesting because it was such a debacle with uh, pandemic unemployment. So we'll see if that works out. She's making Yoda ears, by the way, right there. Marshmallow Yoda ears. I'm inside the Disney Grand California Hotel, right next to Disneyland. This is the main lobby. 
really nice place guys if you ever get a chance to stay here it's beautiful but also if you ever go to a tourist place and there's a hotel next to it this is where you use the restroom this is where you use the this is where you eat okay eat at the hotel because you can sit by yourself you can charge your phone read the newspaper do whatever you want to do but again that's what i always recommend people do but this is a really nice place it's beautiful place is uh you know for january this place is crazy how how you know not a lot of people but it's just nice so check it out i've got a friend coming here next week with his kids so lucky guy look at this guys i mean you got the water slide back here i mean this is really cool but leads to my next story and that is that not everything's like this okay it has just been announced that there's a huge shortage of Florida oranges okay that they haven't gotten the crop that they've gotten in years and that you're going to see orange juice prices shoot up 30% isn't that crazy don't have enough product and there's a huge shortage this pool area is massive guys look at this thing so share your thoughts on that you know everything is shooting up right now absolutely everything we're hearing so much from the banks and what could potentially happen now two things uh, a subscriber sent me a letter from PNC Bank where PNC Bank is doing what Bank of America is doing, where they're cutting their hours back. They don't want to deal with people publicly. They will only want to deal with you going through the ATM and your mobile app and calling them. That's it. They don't want to, they don't want to interact with you in the branch. They want to, in fact, cut hours in the branches. Again, guys, remember when banks were fighting to stay open longer? Wells Fargo Bank was going to stay open until 6 o'clock every night. End of business would be at 4 o'clock, but they would let you transact up until six o'clock you know when the health crisis started all this stuff ended you know so it's it's a complete mess but the other thing is that you're seeing a tremendous amount of credit units credit unions are owned by the depositors so they're they're different than a regular bank they're usually financially more sound now what the larger banks are doing and there's a story below that says that they're buying out the credit unions they're giving them such lucrative offers that these people cannot turn them down so the credit unions are selling out to the bank. So if you're in a credit union, look for another credit union. But again, the financial stability of your bank should be something that you should think about. I don't care if you have if you have a few thousand bucks in the bank, you know, make sure you have cash on hand. Make sure you have a, you know, you can get cash out of the bank because what you're going to see is if something shuts down for an extended period of time, five, six, seven days, and we're starting to see all these bank closures. And again, it's not that the bank closes for one day, two days, but when a bank closes for nine days straight, that's wrong. And they used to have a law that a bank couldn't be closed for three days, but visit our other branches is what they're saying. Well, the next branch is 20 minutes away. They don't care. That's what they're saying now. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. I really want to know what you think. And, uh, you know, let me know. I'm going to finish this video with these last two stories. And the first one is RBA Advisors. The CEO, Dan Suzuki, said that right now we're at a time where he feels that the stock market is just like a dot-com era and that he sees that the stocks are going to drop 50% right now and that everything is in place for things to, to drop. Now, another story that I'm going to wrap into that is JP Morgan. They're saying the truth is that nobody's really buying anything right now from the trading desk. So you're seeing that all these prices are inflated right now and everything's... Uh, being bought through the plunge protection team and not being bought on the marketplace right now. So it should drop. And again, I think that you should see a 5,000 point drop in the stock market. That would be normal. But again, you know, they're inflating it. And if you follow people like Manorino, you can still make money on stuff like this. But eventually, the house of cards is going to collapse. Now, the final story is Beyond Meat. Okay? You guys, that stuff is... I didn't like it at all with the Beyond Nuggets, but here's the crazy thing. Beyond Meat is going to partner with Pepsi. Okay, big deal. They're going to make Pepsi meat? No. 
They're going to make fake beef jerky, okay? Who wants that? I mean, guys, I mean, you go to the gas station in the poorest neighborhood, you can get fake beef jerky, but they're gonna make fake beef jerky out of that Beyond Meat. So, again, guys, you can't make this stuff up. Share your thoughts and all this stuff. I, I just think it's gonna be disgusting. You know, hay sticks, mmm, whatever, okay? Fake beef jerky. Please do not forget to hit the like button. Please do not forget to the subscribe button. Uh, share this with all your friends and colleagues. Don't forget, if you want more access to me, we have a Patreon channel that you can uh, sign up for. And also, we have an email list that you can sign up for. Onward and upward, guys. I will see you all very soon.